We live in an attention economy, with constant streams of information suffocating all of our senses 24 hours of the day. But don't you feel like you're actually learning less? Like your ability to learn, focus, and actually achieve what you want to achieve is drifting further and further from your reach every single day? In 2004, we had an attention span of about two and a half minutes. In 2012, this shrunk to just 75 seconds. And in the last five to six years, it's shrunk again to only 46 seconds. This is an attention mechanism at least 200,000 years old, which came with the rapid expansion in the prefrontal cortex during a significant period in our evolutionary history. When there is more information hitting our senses than we can process, we need filters and biases that shine spotlights on what might be useful. This is the role of dopamine in attention, and it's closely linked to our internal goals. The problem is that society and technology evolves exponentially faster than our attention mechanisms can keep up. Our information blockers are continuously outmatched over time as development has completely exploded in the last 200 years. This means we'd likely have an attention mechanism at least hundreds of thousands of years old, optimized for survival in a society of basic tools, languages, and culture. Many, many orders of magnitude more simple than an on-demand carousel of 60 second short form videos centered around bullying our primitive dopamine systems with variable reward, delivering fast-paced content, quick scene changes, colorful graphics, and engaging transitions. It's really no wonder we feel like we have no control. When it comes to social media, we have vastly underpowered hardware, but maybe our brain is just adapting. And why is this necessarily a bad thing? We are getting more information quicker and learning faster. Unfortunately, as I think we've all experienced, this is really just not the case. To understand why, we need to dive deeper into the neuroscience of reward and attention. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that regulates attentional circuits in our prefrontal cortex. It does this by breaking up tasks into smaller tasks and then simulating possible motor actions it could motivate to take us from point A to point B. This simulation is a form of attention as it's shining a spotlight on one potential motor activity when there's thousands of possibilities. If I want to get shredded, this requires a combination of placing my muscles under greater and greater sustained load, while eating the necessary proteins, complex carbohydrates, and nutrients, while also getting enough deep sleep for my muscle fibers to recover, repair, and grow. Dopamine is the master regulator of this plan and will motivate you step by step by rewarding you in small amounts. Gym shoes are on, trigger a dopamine hit. Eat a healthy lunch, yummy, yummy dopamine. Considering how ancient this system is, it really does a remarkably good job at getting us from point A to point B. When you consider how unremarkable any of these steps are in comparison to a session of scrolling on reels or shorts, it's actually a miracle we do anything at all. But it is having a damaging effect. When our dopamine neurons receive stimulation, one neuron shoots a molecule of dopamine over to another one. This binds at that receptor, inducing its rewarding effects. This causes the two neurons which committed this biological bachata to physically change shape, becoming more linked, like dance partners practicing and improving. This is a form of neuroplasticity called long-term potentiation. Neuroplasticity also causes the neurons dendrites, which you can think of as their arms, to stretch and expand. These arms create synapses with the other dendrites of other neurons, creating circuits of ever-grading complexity. The extent of shape change is correlated with the frequency and intensity of the stimulation, creating more concrete and robust neural circuits through chronic stimulation. This reinforces behaviors that led to this strengthening and compels us to act them out day after day. Since short form content is so stimulating, it's incredibly potent at rewiring and consolidating these reward pathways, which then promote the repetition of those behaviors. This is what results in infinite doom scrolling, and that's not even the worst part. This is when our body's homeostasis kicks in to prevent excess of dopamine in these reward pathways. Chemical messengers travel deep into the cell nucleus, which alter our DNA. The instruction, halt production of dopamine receptors and increase production of dopamine reuptake systems. You can think of these like miniature dopamine vacuums that suck dopamine molecules back into the neuron and prevent that biological dance from occurring. The issue is that a reward 
reward pathways are insanely complex and our neurons, unlike us, are excellent multitaskers, being capable of tangoing with up to 10,000 other neurons at any given time. This means there's always massive overlap in our reward circuitry, from watching short form content, pornography, video games, to eating broccoli, going for runs and going to sleep early. Our brain has to balance all of these insanely different things within the same absurdly complex mesh of interconnected neurons dancing together in an almost infinitely large flash mob. A literal impossible task. But the point here is clear. The cheaper and the more intense and the more frequent the dopamine, the shorter and shorter our attention becomes. And this trickles over into every aspect of our lives. Suddenly the reward for putting on your running shoes pales in comparison to an hour session on TikTok. And God, that chocolate bar just looks so tantalizing in comparison to the bowl of Brussels sprouts. As our attention span shrinks, our ability to focus on complete mundane tasks and feel productive also withers away with it. As we fill our consciousness with more and more streams of information to fill the attentional void left by TikTok, we drain our limited cognitive reservoir. With each switch of attention, we are being robbed with hidden metabolic fees as our brain is constantly readjusting, trying to make sense of each new stream of data, reducing the chances of completing any meaningful work or attaining any sense of flow. This makes us even more tired, unfulfilled, and less able to focus in a self-perpetuating loop of mediocrity and disdain. It's pretty bad, and the speed and intensity of content will likely only keep increasing increasing alongside our dwindling attentional mechanisms, accelerating headfirst towards a cliff. The truth is, you need to take personal action to ensure the zombification process that has started does not continue. No one else is going to take it for you. The most important first step is limiting the information you take in. Delete apps stealing your precious bandwidth. Lock yourself out of your phone. Download apps like Opal and Forest, but take action. Don't assume you're going to have more willpower to tomorrow because it's 2024 and new year new me i promise you your reward pathways are the same and they will drive you to cheap dopamine when you're at your most tired i've personally made a very conscious effort to delete instagram off my phone leave my phone in my bedside table during work and to never ever multitask never divide your attention even when resting if you're watching netflix i'm only watching netflix none of this background noise nonsense you now understand the inner mechanisms on on a deep level and you can understand and fully appreciate what's going on. You know the damage that it's having. The next thing you can do is slowly reintroduce things into your life that require undivided focus and attention. For me, this is reading, meditation, and long runs. These are your opportunities to start reversing the neuronal wiring laid down by TikTok. By focusing on one thing for extended periods of time and receiving natural pleasure through slow dopamine, the reverse process occurs where your reward pathways start to reward yourself for doing the hard work. Your dopamine system doesn't want to betray you. You just need to point it in the right direction and it will assist you in what you want to do. Start small and build up. The compounding effects here will be noticeable in your work, productivity, and overall well-being. The last one is the super obvious but cannot be overemphasized sleep, diet, and exercise. Exercise is the only thing we know that directly increases dopamine receptor synthesis in the brain. Not a single drug known to man that we have ever come up with can do that same thing. Alongside proper sleep and diet, you will naturally have more free circulation circulating dopamine, more motivation, more ambition, and more energy to actually accomplish your goals.